we have been if you follow us uh, all of our supporters um we've been doing our regional thing in terms of i think we have covered the south uh influ most influential artists from the south i think we did the midwest last week i'm getting old so y'all gotta help me uh so i figured we might as well go to the west coast and now this is gonna be real hard to tie down and i know this conversation could linger so you know we just be mindful for time but most influential i don't even know if it's fair to say artists for, or to keep it at just artists and maybe include groups because there's so much stuff that came out west you know what i'm saying it's, it's kind of hard to pin down one person now they got a sound we all know that um but i'm gonna open it up to individuals groups um so we can just kind of go around the table like we've been doing the last couple weeks. But I but I will start by saying this. And, you know, I, I, J.D., if I come to you first, would you be upset if I said N.W.A.? No, because that's actually who I was going to say. N.W.A. has to be the most influential uh, group from the West Coast. And not just because of uh, content, mm -hmm. uh, strictly based off of how they came into the game, how they packaged themselves. Like we're, we're sitting there talking about merch and things like that. They literally came from a town with filled with gang culture. You had Bloods and Crips. Yep. Their attire was black and white. So that means that anybody could attach themselves to this group because they, they didn't subscribe to either one of the gangs. Whether they did on their own time or whatnot, mm -hmm. they didn't in the music. Gotcha. Uh, the music was, of course, gangster music, uh, which I know uh, uh, Jay Moore brought up Ice T a I few episodes, a few episodes back. <laughs> yeah, a few episodes ago. I got which, a couple text messages and, uh, about of that. Of course, Ice T has to be influ influential to NWA because he's the first to do it. But in the same time, the way the NWA packaged it, um, the way they toured it, the the um, just the overall impact of that group. Um, they they took the the hip hop game by storm when they came out. Yeah, like true. people had to match their energy. You know what I'm saying? It was like the first crew. I wouldn't even say first crew because that's false. I mean, you had the uh, uh, fabulous uh, fives and uh, I don't even know. You about to get me lying saying names? <laughs> no, uh, furious, furious five. Furious five yeah, uh, juice crew. Juice crew. Yeah, them, but yeah, it was just yeah. that. NWA, they all stood out on their own, even though Ice Cube was behind a lot of the lyrics. It was just, it was a machine. Yeah. Literally was a machine, and, and they they sewed it up, and very influential. Okay. I'm, I guess we were on the same page then. Mm -hmm. uh, Jay Moore, talk to me, man. Are, are, we, uh, are we two for two with NWA, or is there something that we're missing? I, you know, <laughs> and I know people are like, why does he cape so hard for Ice-T? <laughs> But the thing is, Ice T was, you know, when um, when Dre and Yella was still wearing sequins and doing dance music. Oh, here we go. And this is no diss. And this is not. It's not like I'm. I'm trying to put them on Front Street. It was in the movie. We all know this. We know about the world class wrecking crew. You ain't have to say sequins though. You ain't. What was it? Out there. I mean, what, well, that's what Alonzo had them doing. Like you I know, mean, they was. It to, was. It was straight. That's what the R and B. That's what all the R and B dudes. You ain't have to say sequins though. Well, it, mean, was, it was definitely sequins. Yeah. It was, but oh, you know, they needed that black and white Raiders. You know, in, in so side white socks. Doing so this. while they were doing that, you know, Ice T had six in the morning and it's just straight gangsterism involved in his music, and so like the the road was laid out for NWA by Ice T. To a lesser, there was a cat named Toddy T. He had a joint called the Batter Ram, but you know people yeah. don't know that as much. But Ice T was putting out whole. That Albums that was actually a skating rink song here, was it? Yes, sir. okay. I'm asleep, I just learned something, I yes, didn't know sir. that. Okay, but you know, um, and you know, Ice T, he is, of course, he kicked the he kicked the the gangster lyrics, but he also had a little this is you know, he had a little bit of pop politics in there because yeah. when you watch the, the this is probably why that he got away with having his videos on MTV without it just being straight exploitation is because there was all like the you know the my favorite probably one of my top five rap videos of all times is high rollers now if you just watch the first 
you know, three minutes and, and don't listen, watch the end of it, you think this is just straight exploitation. He's hmm. got the, 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 the gold and the cars and, 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 yeah. and light skinned chicks, which was not very much standard in, in, in rap videos at that time. I and, see. And, you know, come on. I he, see. He had the Ferraris and, and ben, you understand they weren't renting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I so see. these I see. were, these were hustlers cars yeah. that were in this video. But, you know, at the very end, the, 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 the protagonist, you know, he wound up getting well, shot. You know, exactly. you better watch your step if you want to be a high roller. So it's not like Ice T was just exploiting gangster culture. He, he was, was trying to let <laughs> he, but he was trying to, but he was trying to be res, uh, as responsible as you could and still keep it hardcore. So <laughs> I don't know, I don't know about that. Man. I, yeah, I, go, I don't go back know and, about you know, that. I mean, you right, you, you right. Because even like, the song colors, even the song colors, he's talking about even a song uh, called game. "You Played Yourself." Yeah. Like Ice T was really, he's been trying to give everybody game for the better part of thirty five years. Hey, I, yeah. I fool so, with Ice T. I ain't, you know, I don't. Ice but it just fans. wasn't packaged like NWA. That's it wasn't because saying. you know. You know, Ice Cube talking about should have never been let out the penitentiary. Yeah, like, like he that's, wrote that when he was in college, and right. I'm, that's not a, like, once again. I actually was in high school. Yeah, high yeah. school. Okay, that's right. That's right. But yep. you know, Ice Cube ain't seen no parts of the penitentiary. Nah. You know, but I'm just saying, like, if and don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to uh, minimize NWA's influence because when you look at the NWA tree, the NWA tree, you know, starts. It was, you know, you talk you're talking about you you're talking about everybody from JJ Fad all hey, the way to Kendrick now Lamar, we talk. even down south. Yeah, down south. You know, you uh, talking about the West Side Connection. Yeah. You talking about the game. Now you know, we talking. Uh, you talking about caution for those of you who know above the law. Mm -hmm. So the NWA tree is probably the, in all of hip hop is probably the craziest tree ever. And let's not forget that I mean, EZ wasn't a studio gangster. At not all. at all. Oh no, no. He That's was not, out there really doing. He it. just didn't represent. He, you never heard him say Kelly Park Crip. But yeah. right, right. You know, it, it, those who know Eazy, -E, it, it, he was real. Yeah. This, this is a. Uh, this is my favorite. This is my favorite part of these topics when I get to come to my brother Lone, because uh, you know if you've been following us, sometimes he tends to not care, but I think he's gonna <laughs> care on this one. Lone, talk to me about the West Coast, man. I think it's got to be Jerry Heller. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, you can make a case for that. Here's what they think about you. Yo. Here's what hey, they Red think August, about get you. your boy, man. <laughs> Reel your boy back in, man. Ice Cube ain't feeling that, that sentiment at, at all. all. No, I, I, it, I, I would probably <laughs> lean towards NWA. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I've, I had a feeling Jay was going to go towards Ice tea, Ice tea. Yeah. which I think is a great argument. Yeah, but I can, I, I can but see it. Your guys is, you know, your guys knowledge on West Coast music is way higher than mine because I didn't grow up with it like that. Yeah. You know, the first Tupac album I heard was all eyes on me. So Man, listen, I know. got in trouble. Yeah, that's facts. This is a vivid memory. On um, Saturday mornings, when mom would go to work, she was a beautician, so you know it's it's busy on Saturday. Mm -hmm. So you're not expecting mom to be on for a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So we would have to clean the house or whatnot. My brother always had records. He kept them up in his uh, cabinet in his room so they weren't laying out so you would never get caught with them. I mean, he had Too Short, Born to Mac, uh, NWA's first couple of albums, whatever. We had a record player. We would play this every Saturday. We would play these these records. Mom came home early from work this, mm. this day. Mm-hmm. And those records disappeared. Yeah, and that was the end of that story. Oh yeah. man, yeah, yeah. I, she didn't throw them away though, which was cool. She ended up actually giving them back to him, like after you know some time had passed. It was just that what she was hearing when she came in the house. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah, she wasn't yeah. feeling that. So yeah, some of those albums, boy, like it was some, some lyrics on there. This is the thing even with with the Strat of the Compton album. Hey. You know, we could act like this was our our political. You know, this it, this this substance, and they saying something, and the police, and this, that, and the third. When you get to that second NWA album, man, man, <laughs> man. you really can't look. I listen to nah. that now, and I I was like, I was listening to this as a teenager. I was, hey, now that, my that, parents had a had, they should have been mad. That album is nasty. Oh, all I'm, the way through. But no, the second the side B, man. Ooh, it's 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 pretty rough. And it's at. It's song after song after song. It ain't just one sprinkled in. No, yeah. no, it's not like oh they gonna do the nasty nah, song here. Nah, it's, it's like <laughs> just it's, it's the whole nasty. thing. It's the yeah. whole second it's, half of the album. Yeah. It's just and I'm not talking about like nasty like the songs you hear on the club now. No, and no, I'm no. talking about 
like it was a mix crimes. of it was a yeah. mix of, nasty. Yeah, <laughs> Rudy Ray Moore, Too Short, and, and uh who am I? uh Elliot Ness. It's all mixed go. together. Look, it's <laughs> it's the difference between, you know, going to a strip club and, you know, uh uh handing the, the lady a, a dollar and balling up the dollar and just throwing it at her. <laughs> nah, for real. <laughs> hey, I've witnessed that happen in real life. <laughs> Hey. So so wait, but what about all right? So we 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 mentioned a bunch of L.A. <laughs> artists. What about the Bay? Would you would you consider West Coast two different sounds? Would, who would be your influence? E forty. Oh. I was gonna say E forty and two shorts from that area. MC Hammer. Too. The thing, Don't do that. The reason Don't why do that. the reason Don't why I pick E forty over two short, mind you, because two short came technically out. came out first, but they actually were doing it around the same time. Yeah. But two short got uh he got familiarized first like regionally in all over the country but the way e40 was independent e40's literally been independent his whole career entire career um yep. so if anybody has a blueprint for how to be independent you definitely got to look at e40 i know we talk about master p all the time but yeah without e40 there will probably be you no master p, p. Mm. i you know i, I said it kind of tongue-in-cheek but Look, Hammer. Hammer taught a lot of us how to get money. He just did it in a way that we we didn't G for initially. Mm -hmm. But he's like a lot of people took that that formula and tweaked it and figured out. Okay, this is how I get on the radio during the day. Yeah, this yeah. is how I can get. Okay, maybe I'm not gonna uh, tap dance for, uh, for 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 Kentucky Fried Chicken like Hammer did, but <laughs> I'm a still you know that still but, it, me, but man. did you know what that opened the door for Pete Rock and CL Smooth and Grand Puba to do Sprite, Sprite commercials. commercials? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I mean, so, he had a cartoon. Hammer, he did. Hammer show. Look, Hammer showed us how to like how to really get money. Mm -hmm. But he really technically followed the Michael Jackson formula. Just Good, applied yeah. it to rap. You can just on the rap side. Rap. Yeah. yeah, and uh, like without we, saving his money though. And if we're yeah. talking most, I mean, that, you know, he told us how to get it. He didn't yeah. talk about how to Mike, save it. Mike True. wasn't Mike wasn't sharing his funds with Tito and, no, and Jermaine no. and them. Look, Mike oh, got off man. the victory tour and said, "This is it." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally, he said, "This is it." Yo. Especially when Randy got the jaw right and then moving all stupid. He was you like, see I'm not taking y'all back on the road I no more. Y'all no. no more. Y'all get no we're more not, money with hey. me. Matter of fact, I might figure out how to buy these uh, uh, publishing rights on all this stuff. Cause y'all ain't getting nothing. What we not gonna do is have any Randy Jackson slander on this Listen, show today. You sir. seen the video? I saw. Randy. I think actually that was Marlon. Was it Marlon? It didn't make any difference. Yeah, it, that it, Mike had had said a little Randyish, don't it? Yeah, all right, man. Yeah, Look, a couple things. One, <laughs> all right. One, <laughs> Hammer, most influential. I'm not saying no, most influential, I, but you know, I, but we got to we got to we got to talk about it. I, to, yeah. to your point, I give him peas because if you think about it now, everything is commercialized, and he would have done it anyways. He's too legit to quit. Oh my God, man. This Please whole thing was a setup hurt. for that joke. Yeah. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo, I forgot how much he raised my blood pressure with stuff like that until we got back together. Um but nah, man, like it's it's commercialized now. You know, Hammer had a, a part in that. And and uh Terry, I want to give you peace too for not saying brutition. I love you for that. Because I hear that all the time and it, it makes me cringe. There's well, you no know such what? thing as a brutition. I, I had a pretty decent uh, educational upbringing. Okay. I mean, <laughs> I'm just. If, if I had a said brutish in my house, <laughs> yeah. you heard the story I gave you about the records. Yes, I did. <laughs> it, yeah. It would have been similar to that. Yeah, that lets me know that you, you know, you had an old school, you got an old school mama and you was raised right. That's what that means. Yeah. So I, I feel you. But I'm yeah. so happy you didn't say brutition because that's nah. really stupid. Well, you did. So, oh, yeah. The phonics. Hopefully, if y'all listen, y'all know not to say that no more. <laughs> um, <laughs> but now, nah, Lone's point is valid because the Bay definitely has its own sound. Yeah, you, you think about man with Forty and them and uh, Mac Dre, all them cats out there, like it's a little, it's a little different. Yeah, way so, different. The Bay in LA yeah. might as well be on two different coasts. Yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure. So I'm not mad at that. And I, I'm I'm gonna go with Forty Water too because I just I gravitated towards Forty more than I did Too Short. Respect to Too Short, but I would have been I was pro Forty when I was coming up. So, yeah, you definitely couldn't get caught listening to no too short. No, 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 no way. Like I remember having the, I think I snuck out and bought the tape for getting it. You remember the the uh, it's supposed to be his last album. Yeah, mm -hmm. I had the cassette tape. I remember listening to it on the way to a basketball game, like in a Walkman. That's how long ago that was. So yeah, I definitely remember that. But yeah, I'm pro forty even when he dropped 
three albums with what you say long 65 songs a piece of oh, one album with 65 <laughs> songs. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I fool with 40, man. And his entrepreneurial game is high. He out here goon with the spoon, uh, Lumpia Company, like he wine, wine liquor. Carlo like, Rossi out yeah. here. Yeah, the Earl Stevens. Uh, yeah. 40, 40, to Terry's point, been independent forever. And now he's just expanding that empire. So I respect it. So we can go with that. We can rock with um, I mean, NWA we, and, uh, and 40. I mean, we do this so the people who listen have, you know, they yell at the uh, <laughs> the, the car, whatever, wherever yeah. you're listening. Yeah. I can't believe y'all didn't say Tupac. Yeah, that, that's going to. Tupac gonna, technically ain't from L.A. Talk to California, him. but yeah. well. I'll get a couple texts about. Uh, Ice T though, I know. I just know they come in. <laughs> I know yeah, they come. Okay, in. they can forward them texts, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll send. I'll send them to at Final Level on Twitter. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this segment of the New Old Heads podcast, make sure you join our live show every Tuesday from nine to eleven p.m. Eastern on twitchtv Heads. You can also catch playback of all of our shows on any podcast app and youtubecom Network. and go to NewOldHeads.com slash community to join our Discord.